All right, it's all right. Hold, calm down. Calm down now. Jeez, rowdy little thing, aren't you? Aw, there you are. You're okay. Everything's all right. Say, what are you anyway? A, a chicken? Oh, yeah? Weird looking chicken. And you passed up the seeds and worms for the cheese? Yeah, I, I guess I'd do the same. I just thought about this, but um, how would you like to be my new co-host? Puss in Boots is a fairy tale character adapted to supporting character in the DreamWorks film Shrek 2. What a sentence. He's pretty popular with audiences, so they gave him his own spin-off movie in 2011. Eh, it just wasn't anything special. I thought that Puss as a protagonist had some potential, I mean he was a lot of fun in Shrek 2, but unfortunately they didn't really give him anything to do in his own movie. He doesn't really have an arc, like, he doesn't change really as a character, he just goes through the plot. I would have liked it if they expanded more on Puss's relationship with his mother. In my memory, she was a bigger part of the story, but in the actual film, they only share like three scenes together. You know, they could have played into that shame he feels for abandoning her and being a thief and all. You know, she can't look upon him because he's a thief. The pacing really isn't all that great. Certain scenes just drag on and maybe shouldn't have been there at all, honestly. <laughs> I do feel the pacing is important in an adventure movie because you're going from place to place you want to get there in a timely manner. The best part of the film is probably these two murderous Jack and Jill people. They're just such an extreme interpretation of the nothing nursery rhyme characters. And they're definitely not brother and sister. I want a baby. And after Puss in Boots released in 2011, there was never again a good cat movie. Except for Garfield. But then, suddenly, from out of nowhere, there was another. Hey everybody, it's me, Cool Cat, and I've got a fantastic story to tell you. Cool Cat Saves the Kids, released in the year of our Lord 2015 to critical acclaim. I love being the boy! It was out of this world. It had everything, man. The cat suit is perfect. The cinematography makes you feel like Cool Cat. I think Remy Ratatouille was in there too, actually, and it, dude, it was just so cool. Cool Cat was actually based on a book series written by Derek Savage, or as I like to call him, Father Derek. Daddy Derek! Just look at this. Derek the Destroyer beautifully intertwines visual art and the written word, using both as a palette to promote the US military. If that's not worship worthy, man, I don't know what is. Derek also directed and stars in the movie as himself. Have fun, son, all right. Son! I'm sure DreamWorks saw this film and noticed that Father Derek was quickly going to overtake the orange cat film business. So, in 2022, out of spite, they released their best movie since Kung Fu Panda. However, I'm not here to debate which of these movies is better. I'm here to decide, once and for all, who is more cat-like, puss, or cool cat. Only one way to find out. We're gonna have to take a look at both of these movies at the same time. There's no way I'm doing this alone. I'm gonna need a partner. As you may know, a past associate of mine and I had a mutual falling out recently. But I don't need him. I've got a new guy. Gentle people, it is my pleasure to introduce to you, Bob the Chicken. He, uh, he, he doesn't do much, but he's kind of cute. First, Cool Cat. I haven't watched Cool Cat. I'm really taking a risk here. I mean, me talking about something I have no knowledge on? What a stretch. All right, got the DVD here and in it goes. This isn't my fight, but I'm going to fight it. Don't do it, cool cat. I love you. Oh, Darla. Ah! All right. 
That was pretty good. I enjoyed it and I haven't pressed play yet. I think now's a good time to talk about Puss in Boots. This movie's really something special. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, released in 2022, and it's easily better than the original in every way. The characters bounce off each other way better, the animation is beautiful, the story is exciting, and the main character actually goes through character development. It's great. This is a kid's movie in a way that doesn't alienate older viewers. Meaning it's actually pretty good, and it's not babyish. I'm tired of acting like it's okay for children movies to be bad because they're for children. Do you really want to raise the future generations on garbage food? I don't see why movies should be any different. An obvious standout to the film are its animation and visuals. It's very clearly inspired by Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse from 2018, with the way things are colored, textured, and especially animated but I think they do enough different to stand out. I say inspired because I mean it. Spider-Verse was definitely a beautiful moving comic book, while Puss in Boots feels like a moving painting. Honestly, its visual style reminds me more of something like Rayman Legends than Spider-Verse. This is always a plus. I think the animation probably has more in common with Spider-Verse than the visuals. By the way, when I say animation, I mean the way things move. They do this dropped frame thing whenever somebody's like moving really quick. I think it really effectively communicates motion, but I could see someone not liking it. The fight scenes are just so fun in this movie, man. They're all jumping around, going crazy, there's like colors. I should mention the colors. They're really good in here. Everything's so vibrant and beautiful. It really does feel like a storybook. Every single character in this movie has a unique voice, whether that be how they look or how they actually sound, and I just love that. I'm just saying, like, if every character in this movie said water buffalo, you'd get a different result each time. This guy right here, Big Jack Horner, is pretty entertaining, but I'll never forgive John Mulaney for... Chippendale. Something else this film has in common with Spider-Verse is its breakneck pacing. Scenes aren't too long, they aren't too short, they're just right. Get what I'm saying? Scenes just fly by, man. It really makes the whole thing feel like an adventure, which is important. Listen, I don't like anything anymore. You gotta let me have this. Everything about this movie is just... <laughs> it's exactly what I wanted from the original Puss in Boots. It's a high-stakes adventure with fairy tale elements that are twisted in creative and fun ways. It's just... I love it. And as long as I'm happy, then nothing else really matters. I mean, come on, let's be real. I mean, this film makes me feel like DreamWorks is back on top of the animation field, which is a spot they haven't been at since, uh... OVER THE HEDGE! <laughs> Puss in Boots 2 is, without a doubt, one of the greatest Orange Cat films ever made. One of them. What is there to say about Cool Cat? Really, it's it's Cool Cat. There he is. Cool and Cat go together like butter and toast. I think it's pretty clear why this is so good. I mean, just, just look at you. Look at this. Use your eyes. So Cool Cat is a movie where a guy in a big cat suit goes around teaching kids life lessons. Cool Cat, what are you doing in the Great War? One of the more consistent morals of this film is that bullies don't have any friends because they're bullies. Yo, yo, yo! I met her at this house party on El Segundo. I feel bad for any friendless child who just wanted to watch a cat movie and now they're being told they're a bully. But anyways, bullies don't have any friends and just take big doo-doos on people. They're really just a big waste of life. Wait, 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 what am I doing up there? It's got action, drama, acting, and where is Cool Cat? This feels less and less like a real film the more I think about it. I mean, what's more likely? Cool Cat exists? Or Cool Cat was created in a fever dream? Actually, I think that both might be true. I mean, this poor guy had to run around in this stuffy suit on what looked like blazing hot shooting days. Let's check the credits to give some thanks to the guy who actually did play Cool Cat. Cool Cat is real! Cool Cat, please, I take back everything bad I've ever said about you. This, this looks, looks great! great. I, I love when it's gray outside. outside! I got all your merchandise on pre-order, Mr. Cool Cat, and I'm following all your social media. Especially Twitter. And, and I'm, I'm Cool Cat, Cat and, and I, I love, love all kids. kids! Please forgive me, Cool Cat. Ah, you don't understand. This is all I've got. <laughs> These movies really can't be compared. One's a high-budget, innovative adventure, the other's Puss in Boots. Besides, we're not here to compare quality of film. What we are here to compare is the quality of cat representation, which is something that is not determined by budget, or even talent, necessarily. Now, I'm fairly familiar with cats and other types of animals as of late, 
So I think I'd be a good judge for this. Let's start with Puss in Boots. And first off, come on. Walking on two legs, talking, singing, very unrealistic. Cats just don't sing. I mean, what do they have to sing about? You can't give me one reason why a cat should be singing. Don't lie. On wouldn't you look over here at Cool Cat? He's committing the cardinal sin as well. As you can see, Cool Cat is uh, delivering bars uh, under his rapper persona, uh, Little Kid Lover. Zero points for both parties. Do better. All right, now this I like. As you can see here, Puss in Boots drinks a cup of coffee, which, while it isn't something most cats will do all the time, it is a plausible thing to happen. I do believe I've seen a cat or two drink a coffee or two. It does have milk in it. And then it Puss growls like a cat and starts running around like a cat, yeah? I, I like this because it's something that cats do, you know? But uh, Cool Cat has a cat face, you know? Puss don't got a cool cat face. In this next scene here, you can see that Cool Cat wears a lot of shirts and hangs up a bunch of posters with his face and name on it. This is true to the cat way, you know. Cats are very selfish and arrogant creatures. 30 points for Father Derek. Scores aren't looking good for Puss in Boots. How about you, Bob? Care to weigh in on the rankings? Oh. Uh, Puss gets sprayed with a spray bottle. All right, that counts as a cat thing. But if you go over to Cool Cat's Twitter page, uh, you'll see that Cool Cat is a cowboy today, which is a classic cat situation. And, uh, um, cat scratch? I got nothing, man. This, this whole situation's falling apart. Cool Cat wins the kitty test or whatever. I just don't care. I'm gonna be honest, Bob. What you said earlier just really bummed me out. <laughs> Square. Square. Square, 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 square. Oh, you're looking for somebody? Square. Oh, she's your mother. That makes sense. I guess you two belong together. Mama? Uh, yeah, don't sweat it. Bye. Bob, I'm gonna level with you. I don't really understand you or your mother. I was just going off of tone, mostly. Mama. Bye, Bob. Uh, sorry for kidnapping you. I gotta get him back.